Welcome back to the Keaton Knife Shop. Today we're going to be making a neck knife. This design is a Walter Sorrells design. He's a popular YouTuber and knife maker. He's been on Forge and Fire and his channel has been a huge inspiration to me. This design he calls a hawk feather. So to start off I cut out the profile and then I use my new small wheel attachment to grind out the finger grooves. I didn't have all that footage so you saw kind of the finishing grinding of those finger grooves uh, to make them nice and smooth and get out the 60 grit scratches. Next we'll drill some holes. I'm drilling two number 12 holes for my Corby fasteners. Next we're using some spray on layout fluid here so that we can scribe on our grind lines for the bevels. I have this handy center line scribe that my father made me back in 2005, still going strong. Put a nice line in the center of the blade uh, to give us a reference to grind to. Chalk it up in the bevel jig and then got started with a 60 grit belt. I'm actively adjusting the angle of the jig in order to grind closer and closer to my scribed lines up the bevel of the blade. I then transitioned to a 120 grit gator belt and then to a 200 grit uh, aluminum oxide J-Flex belt. I've been really enjoying the J-Flex belts to get uh, sweeping plunge lines uh, by overlapping the belt on the edge of the platen by about uh, about an eighth of an inch. So this is where we're at for the rough grinding pre-heat treat. We're going to be using a piece of blood wood that I had left over from another project. It's just the perfect size for these little handle scales. Got them cut, uh, cut out and then flattened on my granite block. And then clamped to the blade using the blade as a drill guide put out a video on how to attach handle scales on full tang knives, so I'll put that in the cards um, on your top right of your screen. Got the two holes drilled out. Next we're going to trace that on the blocks so that while we're heat treating and tempering the knife, we can be working on the handle scales. So I'll put that aside, start up the forge, and get our heat treat on. This here is a muffle pipe. You'll notice that one end is blocked off with a welded cap on it, and the other end is open. What this will do will allow you to get a more even temperature across your blade so that the heat from the burner is not directly applied to your blade. This will result in a more uniform heat treatment of the knife. Using a hot piece of metal, I'll warm up the canola oil to around 120 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit. To my understanding, this makes the oil less viscous and increases the speed of your quench. Then a little file test to make sure I got a nice hard blade, which I did. And then we're off to tempering. I'll be tempering two blades at the same time, so you'll see this binder clip and spacer to separate the blades. I'll be using my new PID controller. The green number is the set temperature in degrees Celsius. The red number is what the transducer is actually reading. And the two numbers on the orange display are from two cooking probes I have in the oven to co-witness the transducer. If going on, we can get back to working on the handle. So I'll scribe in some lines on the front of these handle scales so I can grind to those lines with my angle jig. All of the finishing on the front of the handle scales will need to be done in advance before the glue up because you will not have access to the front of the scales after the glue up. I brought these handles up to a 600 grit finish. And then drill the counter board holes for the Corby fasteners. I leave about a sixteenth of an inch of meat 
for the Corby fastener to seat onto. And I get a close up of that so you'll be able to see it uh, see it here. And then take the Corby fasteners down. I'm shooting for around the quarter of an inch from inside the inside head. And then I need to take down the OD a little bit so they'll fit into my holes. My quarter inch bit that I made is uh, slightly undersized. The first temper cycle is done. I'll take the blades out, cool them to room temperature, put them back in, do another one and a half to two hour cycle, cool to room temperature, and this is what we got. So that was two cycles at around 408 degrees Fahrenheit. Then I'll do some more sanding on the belt grinder. Knock off any scale or residue. Try to get some nice 220 grit scratches going all the same direction. Clean up the spine and the flats same way. I'm using a, a gator belt to clean up the flats. And then on the hand sanding. I'm starting off with a 220 grit sandpaper and sanding diagonally here to be able to see the scratches. And then I eventually moved on to a 320 grit paper, the Rhino Wet plate paper, which I've really been liking. I got that from Pops Knife Supply. It's great, great sandpaper. Get it all to 300 and then move on to my etch. So I'll etch my maker's mark on the left side of the blade. I was just using a DC power there because I just want a deep etch since I'll be acid etching this blade. Put in the acid for about nine minutes, scrubbed it down with a piece of uh, steel wool, and then made sure they get a lot of baking soda all over this knife to neutralize the acid. And then we're on the shaking. I shook this container with the knife in it for about four minutes. And this is the finish I achieved. Next step, we're on to the glue up, where we'll make sure everything's nice and clean with some alcohol. I bought this scale uh, to weigh out uh, both, both parts of the epoxy. To have the strongest bond possible, having equal parts of this epoxy is mandatory. Doing it by eye, you get close, but not necessarily dead nuts. So for more details on handle assembly, like I said, I have another video on this alone. Um, if you're getting into making knives and you're wanting to make some full tang blades. Using a Q-tip and a little bit of alcohol, I'll clean up the front of the knife. And clip my workstation. It's nice and easy when you can just pull it off like that. That's what the blade looks like after 24 hours. Knock off the bulk of the Corby fasteners with the bandsaw and then move on to the belt sander. This uh, small wheel attachment with a sharp ceramic belt really makes quick work of the excess wood uh, on, this, on this handle. Starting off, I'll get it nice and flat on the sides and the profile of the knife um, all the way down to the metal. Then I'll start rounding the handles, uh, contouring kind of the, the sides of the handles so they have a round shape in the hand. And then move on to the scalloped one inch belts. These things are awesome. They really give you a chance to get into some nooks and crannies and not cut big gouge lines into your handles. They did a great job with these finger grooves. Saves you a ton of time on the hand sanding. And 
then we're off to the hand sanding. So I started off with a 200 grit sandpaper here and worked it up to about 600. You learn to love hand sanding with knife making. After an hour or so of doing that, moved on to the Kydex sheath. I had some cutoffs from previous projects that were great for this. I got really good at cutting that Kydex with just my hand like that. So got sharp, sharp hands. Pretty simple sheath for this knife. I mean, only four eyelet holes for the necklace. Drill the holes, put the eyelets in, mask out the profile of the sheath, then cut it out on the bandsaw and get the grinding. Notice that I did not close the eyelets. This is in an effort to maintain the ability to be able to take the sheet apart and clean the inside of the sheath. Getting grit out of Kydex sheaths is what stops the blade from getting scratched. I have a whole video on Kydex sheath assembly uh, if you're interested in making some sheaths like this. I got this Kydex insert press, press inserts from DIYholsters.com. They're really good. They work well, but they won't work very well on cheap eyelets, so make sure you get the good American-made eyelets from DIY Holster as well. Just drop the blade. Now we're making the paracord necklace. It's been a while since I've made a neck knife, so I had to go back to some of my old pictures to remember how to tie this necklace. It's not too bad once you get going. my cheap picture taking rig. Took some pictures and then did a little test. Comes out nice and easy but it holds firm in the sheath. So this is how it turned out. I really like how that blood wood turned out. It looks good. Corby's will hold it strong forever. It's the knife will never come apart. Thanks again to Walter Sorrels uh, for putting out all the content he does. I've learned a lot from his channel and I encourage uh, all you guys to go check it out. Thanks for watching and we'll have more videos coming at you. Until then, I'll catch you all on the flip side.